What's up fellow journeyers? So for today's video, we're gonna be showing you our mean, clean, lifted truck that we use for full-time RV living. <laughs> no, no, it's actually, uh, it's actually Stuart's truck. <laughs> our truck's over here. <laughs> okay, I literally don't know what this is, it looks like. <laughs> I'm gonna have to have my daughter clean this up. Yeah, so uh, this is our truck. <laughs> And if you still have any respect left for me whatsoever after the intro, um, hopefully you'll see that no, this is not as meticulously um, taken care of as Stuart truck over here behind me, or probably any real man's truck, but uh, as we showed with the grilling, I'm probably not a real man. I'm so naive. <laughs> this is amazing. I used to be like you. I used to be like you. <laughs> <laughs> now you're a real man. <laughs> and I don't take care of my truck as well as I should, <laughs> but that just, it just is what it is, okay? When you travel full time, when you have a truck that's been through the ringer, uh, we bought this in 2018. I like it. It's that's a big truck. It is a big truck. <laughs> so this video, we're gonna answer all the truck questions because if you're gonna RV, if you're gonna tow anything, the truck you get is a huge part of that. You don't wanna mess that up because a truck can be a lot of money. We're gonna answer uh, whether or not we regret our decision as far as the truck we bought. We'll talk about dually versus single rear wheel. We'll talk about mega cab or short bed versus long bed. We're gonna talk about gear, gadgets, all the thing we have in our cab that make our drive days just a little bit easier. Everything, this video is gonna be <laughs> so we're gonna take you along on a travel day with the truck and our travel day actually starts the day before very often so when we can what we can we're loading it up in the truck beforehand this is our uh, food slash snack bag now just for context we have a nine-year-old and a four-year-old there's no shortage of things we use to protect the seats I have a seat protector underneath this seat. I've actually ended up putting seat protectors on the front, two seats on the bottom at least. I'll link to all this. These have been okay, you know, um, they work, but they move around, they slide off like most of the seat protectors. I've got one of these on each side. I have loved these. So we got Husky liners, you know, these are all around the truck in the two spots in the front. And then we have a liner that goes like all the way across the back. And yeah, if you got kids, dogs, extra protection is definitely a good thing. So the day before we leave, I fuel up the truck all the way. So I went and I topped off this tank, this truck comes stocked with like a 30 gallon, 32 gallons. I was like, God, oh, that's not enough. That's not great. So I went and got an extended fuel tank. This is an extra, I think 42, 45 um, gallons of fuel in here. And then also to prep for the next day, I have a, uh, a tire minder TPMS. So I'll turn it on the day before so they can go ahead and just start checking all the tire pressures for all the tires and they're all looking good. But if the tires have been low, I've been very happy with this. I've got no hoses, no cords. You set it to the PSI you want and then you just forget it. <laughs> when you back up your sensor may or may not always detect your kingpin. So you gotta, yeah, you gotta watch for that. Also prep wise, I have a water bottle, but on travel days, it's really nice. I just have these already sitting here if I need them. And then I always keep, I like my prime. I keep that here. And then I keep a Celsius. I don't live by caffeine or live by the Celsius or anything like that. But if, if I'm tired, it's definitely safer for me to drink that and wake back up. All right, so we're fueled up, aired up. Time to get some sleep. We'll see you guys in the morning. Here you go to Georgia. Okay. Can I see your cow lick? I just tried to put it down, but uh, did a cow lick your head last night? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any cows lick your head? No. No? All right, pack it up to leave and hook up with the truck. Check this out. If you have an action camera of any sort, they can show what you see on the action camera on a mobile device. Most of the newer ones should work okay with the range. And then I connect action four and that's what I see on my action four. And boom, I've got a hitching up backup camera that I could actually move or place anywhere I need to. So for us, this is very important because we have this slider hitch and this hitch Pain in my side, but it's a necessity for the short bed. But if it's turned too much to the side, it is an absolute pain to hitch up. And we have these rails on the side too. If you see these rails, we've got to come in at a very precise angle. So having a camera <laughs> has been a huge help. Anywhere you want to put a mount, slap it on there, hook it up to your screen, and then boom, good to go. All right, let's get hooked up. We have used a lot of different forms of navigation. Google Maps, Apple Maps, Garmin GPS, Trucker Apps, RV Trip Wizard. I've used all of the above and I've used all of the above in multiple times over the last nine years. And what I've learned is they all make mistakes. None of them are perfect. You still have to use common sense and it's still a very, very, very good idea 
to look at the route beforehand and know where you're going. Because we're in a situation frequently where Marissa needs to go to the back to help the kids or she's doing homeschool. And so I don't have a physical navigator up here very much. So it's up to me. If there's like a ton of red and the route changes because of something, what I've learned is Google Maps has been the absolute best for up-to-date information. So if I'm gonna have to like pre-plan my routes and look at everything ahead of time and make sure everything's okay and pretty much know the route anyways, like I'm just gonna use Google Maps. The exception is if we're in the Northeast or somewhere with tons of bridges and things that we made, you know, pretty sketch area with a tall rig, like I will sometimes have a second navigation up that shows those areas, but still, I don't fully trust it. I'm checking beforehand for those things. This could end up being interesting because <laughs> we've got this funky angle going on where the art rig's like sloping to the side. We've got this pole I gotta watch out for. My biggest fear as we pull out here is I don't want it to come at too sharp of an angle and then the kingpin ends up hitting the side of the truck. So <laughs> we're gonna film it, see what happens. I'm about to leave. I look at my TPMS, my front right tires, it says 40, so we're gonna double check that. Oh wow, it is 40. Oh my goodness. So while that's going, I'm gonna look and see if I see any. Tires are obviously in good condition. I don't see anything. I'll pull up in a minute. Okay, we're back up to pressure. I put my ear, I turned this off and put my ear down. Put your ear down. It's a tiny little hiss coming from this valve stem. So here's what's going on. <laughs> Two things. Number one, the tire minder last night apparently did not update to the actual settings. It was still sitting on the settings from when last time it was turned on. I don't know why it took us so long to update. This morning I left on a little longer and it updated, so leave it on for a while. Second thing, and this isn't real well known, but it needs to be known. These TPMSs, if it's on a non-steel valve stem, it'll have so much flexibility in the stem that eventually you'll have a leak. Stuart had happened to like three of his in Baja last year. So kind of on me, you gotta watch out for that because that's what's going on. We're gonna go down the road a couple hours and I'll probably recheck it and see where we're at. Just one more thing to keep track of today. We're watching for two things. Okay. We're watching for the, see how the RV's kind of leaning this way. I want to we'll lean and watch to make sure it doesn't lean too much and hit that rail right there. And then after I start pulling out, we want to watch the tail whip and make sure it doesn't whip into this pole. Got it? It's a lot of pressure. You're good. Okay, you baked us fresh bread for the road. We're gonna eat this whole loaf of bread. <laughs> All right, just like that, we're only two hours late and we're off. We got a, I don't know, six to seven hour day today. So when you see the shorts showing how awesome and epic this is, it is, but it's a lot of work. So if you spend any significant time in Florida, the East Coast especially, we're getting onto a toll road here in Florida, which there's a lot of. One of the things we have in our truck is called a uni, I think, or it might be uni, I don't know. <laughs> but it's a toll road pass, but it's cool because it like applies to not just the sun pass, but also a lot of the other passes. Either this pass is gonna cover us, or they're just gonna grab the plates and use that. And then we bought our pass. I think you can just get it on Amazon. You can buy it at gas stations like in the state you're in too. But uh, yeah, we'll literally link to it below along with all the stuff we'll talk about. One of the things we have to keep around is Tra travel johns they had actually come in handy lots of times we've used these before if we're in a national park and the bathroom line is forever long that happened to us in yellowstone like literally the line was probably 45 minutes long and we just whipped one of these out so it's got an absorbent um, material in the bottom you pee in these then it turns to like a gel and so then you can toss it. These come in really handy for emergency situations. If I eat too fast, you'll get a brain freeze. Yeah, eat too fast, you'll get a brain freeze, won't you, buddy? One thing to keep in mind when you're looking at trucks, now we also did this with our van when we towed with the Airstream. I wanted a 12 passenger van, not a 15 passenger van, because usually the shorter the vehicle, the better the turn radius. So we have got a, a Dodge 3500 Mega Cab, which has some other perks too, but the, the big thing, and one of the reasons I bought this was because of the short bed. It's like six foot three, and it has a very short wheelbase. And so my knowledge, other than maybe like an F450 or something like that, this is gonna have the best turn radius of any truck you're gonna get. Even more better than the, you know, typically the short beds. And another perk of the Mega Cab, you get this extra storage in the back. When we first got this, we'd keep this stroller back there, and the stroller was so large. I was like, I don't know where to put this thing. <laughs> but it folded up and fit perfectly behind the seat. So if you got something very large that you always wanna keep inside the truck, Mega Cab might be for you. These seats, if there's nothing behind, you can actually recline in these seats and it's a very comfortable ride in the back if you had adults. Hey buddy, how's that ice cream? Good? It's cold though. <laughs> it's cold though. Probably the biggest pro, honestly, of the Mega Cab. Come back into a normal spot, even if there's no overhang. I'm not saying it's as nimble as a Kia or something like that, but it's definitely more nimble than a long bed truck would be. So those are all the pros. However, 
there are definitely some cons of a short bed pickup truck or especially the mega cab. And case in point was what I just talked about with this hitch. It takes up pretty much the whole bed. This massive 300 something pound hitch in the truck bed. I cannot store much in the back of this bed versus what I would do with a long bed if I had one. It gets some sort of a gooseball hitch. And so what those will do, uh, Reese makes one, Gen Y makes one. You get your entire truck bed back <laughs> because it's just a gooseball. It just comes down on the gooseball in the middle here. You don't have this massive hitch taking up all this space. And then if you get like a turnover ball or something like that, then you can literally get your whole truck bed back. But it's a log bed, you know? You lose the turn radius if you don't have an F450 and it's longer. All the things I talked about, you lose all that with the long bed, so. <sighs> Riding in the truck is usually pretty smooth, except when you're trying to write. <laughs> so I apologize to um, all of our new Team Journey members who are getting our handwritten welcome letters this week because uh, it's a little scribbly. So Team Journey is all about living a life of less junk, more journey. It's such a great place to connect and ask questions, um, meet new friends. It has made my heart so happy to see everyone connecting in there, building friendships, even meeting up in person and camping together. We do live chats. Uh, Nathan and I with, with Team Journey, we host our office hours where you can come in, Zoom with us, and ask us all your questions one-on-one. -on -one. We share our travel maps. It's just such an incredible community we love you guys if you want to be a part of that community head over to teamjourney.com and hopefully you won't get a scribbly welcome letter <laughs> but if you do know that it was part of the journey so we made it to one of our favorite harvest hosts uh, lane southern orchards and uh this is usually the spot we get we love this view you just open the front door and you get this view. Sun sets over here. It's rising over here in the morning. Uh, we're gonna show the outside features of the truck. These are the TPMSs. I checked the pressure on this when we stopped to eat at Chick-fil-A and had gone down. It was one PSI less than the other side, but then again, that could have just been one PSI. Definitely checking this again in the morning before we go. As far as the truck, things we've changed, things we've done. One of the biggest, most obvious beyond the hitch is this toolbox. I installed this myself. And if you know me, like if it was installed by me, it's not that difficult of an install. It's maybe hard to see it, but there's a, uh, a drip feed down here. You can turn it off and on right there. And it gravity feeds the diesel into the tank. At first I was turning it off and on. Literally, I've just left it on. And then I always put fuel through the top and it just makes its way down and... We're good to go. It's worked perfectly. I don't have like a secondary pump I have to worry about going in and out and all that stuff. We always keep a five gallon canister of gas, unfortunately, because we've got a gas generator. I always keep extra oil, coolant with me. So like anything I need to get to fast is in there. Um, see if I can get this down. I can get that down. This is mainly stuff that I access. <laughs> Gorilla tape, headlamp, measure tape. Oh my goodness, these are epic. In an RV, I'm always like, needing to reach small tight spaces and this tiny little curve on the end you know i've got more tools than this there's tools underneath the rv there's tools in the toolbox but these are the ones i find myself accessing the most often we keep a propane tank in the back this is mainly for the uh, propane fire pit we've got basically it's all the dirty nasty stuff a lot of that's back here inside the toolbox of course there's our dewalt pump over there this is like uh just a random camera bag with knickknacks for camera gear this is also random camera gear here now ironically i've only been broken into one time since we've been rving or actually maybe in my life we were at a charity event in Nashville to help raise money with a nonprofit called Flint Global, which is basically te teaching people how to get out of poverty. While the truck was parked in the parking lot and we walked into the charity, they broke in and they stole some of my stuff in the toolbox, which is, I guess, another way to try to get out of poverty. I don't know. So this does not have everything that was originally in here. Like I did have a lot of wrenches, sockets, all that kind of thing. So I've started to kind of build that back. I keep my jack back here. I've got a brush for if I ever do wash the rig or the truck. Stuart watches this video, it's pretty bad. So um, yeah, we, we need a very good washing all around on basically everything I own right now. Let's not forget that. In the back of the truck, I pretty much always keep these Nemo pads. They are super awesome for getting on the ground underneath the truck, the RV, stuff like that. And we still do use the pads. When we bought this truck, I didn't think to check with the dealer whether or not the suspension had been just stolen out of the truck. So they basically yanked the air suspension out of here. I had airbags and a compressor and all the stuff already in this truck uh, from the factory but they pulled it all out. And when I bought it, it was all gone. And so when I got it, the leaf springs couldn't support a load of something like a fifth wheel. We ended up adding two more beefy leaf springs in here. And then these, so I added Timbrens as well. It works. The truck works, it rides well, it rides level, and it gets us from point A to point B. So now as far as gadgets inside the truck, what I found is it's actually tricky in the truck to find a power outlet that's always live. Yes, I could rewire something and do something like that, but I found another solution that if you have the same problem, this may be great for you. So we've got like our tire minder, which is 
again, not wired right now. And so I need to charge this. If I plug it into like a standard USB outlet here, um, it would not charge overnight. However, I have this USB outlet sitting right here and it is ran underneath here to one of these battery banks. So what happens is when the truck does turn on, the battery bank gets recharged. But then if I turn the truck off, I've got enough juice in this to charge like maybe an iPhone a couple of times. It'll easily charge, you know, this tire minder overnight. So when I come back, this will be charged up. It's not relying on the truck being off or on. And I'll link to this, you know, they're like, I don't know, 30-ish dollars on Amazon. So three things we keep in the truck is sort of like a just in case kind of thing is our first is our first aid kit in our uh, crate here. Second, we keep a heavy duty tire repair kit in the truck and then third is our noco booster uh, which is meant for heavy duty trucks and can crank up this truck and probably almost any vehicle with no issues whatsoever if the battery is a uh, low or dead i love magnets this magnet is usually my phone it goes right here and i can control things with that if i need to i have a magnet right here that i use for my ipad mini that i use for navigation we have a magnet up here that i'll put like a gopro or anything i need to snap here camera wise i'll snap on that and i can get a front shot or if i want to this is on the magnet right now now I can get like a straight shot of everybody in the truck at once. I've got another magnet up here in the top corner. My GoPro Action 4, whatever I'm using, I can snap that up in this little spot up here. And then I've got this beefier mount that's screwed in, which is what I use for our A7S III. It'll slide into the Arca Swiss. I can tighten it right here and then I can rotate it. This controls the tension as far as it rotating, so I can rotate it side to side. But that's where our big camera sits. not really going down at all <laughs> so that's good <laughs> get me back to Tennessee do y'all want to go in and get breakfast Welcome to Bucky's. I don't know, we could have went up three, 400 miles what I had on the tank. It was gonna be close getting back to Tennessee and I was like, I'm not even gonna cut it close. We went ahead and topped this tank back off. As far as mileage, I restarted when we started here and we're getting, uh, I think we're at 10.9 per gallon is what we're getting on mileage. Pretty wild we could go from Orlando to Middle Tennessee and like not have to stop for fuel. But we did, it's Bucky's. Like you gotta stop. They got 50 million signs. Like you just, you don't have a choice. You like have to stop. Okay, time to settle the debate once and for all. Dually versus single rear wheel. Now in our case, it's pretty much a no brainer. I mean, we're like, I don't know, 17, 17, five loaded. This could be up to 18, 18, five gross. So you get in that range to me, it's like you're dually. So we're dually like there's single rear wheels that can like handle a lot of weight. As far as the width of this vehicle, like you'll read all oh, you can't get through the banks. You can't do the drive throughs. I mean, yeah, you got to use some common sense on some of the stuff, but the, personally for me, it's more about the length of the truck than it is the width of the truck. The width has not been that big of a deal. Yeah, so like here's our cargo on this, 5,259 pounds. I mean, I get it. Some of your single rear wheels are getting better and they can hold more weight, but your bottleneck on a truck is not what it can tow. It doesn't matter, really. I mean, really. I mean, yeah, you need some braking and stuff like that, but it's, it's about the cargo. That's usually going to be your bottleneck uh, to where you see these trailers that are like bending the truck down and then you get all the sway and then that's when it gets really dangerous. When you got a dually and you're towing and let's say the wind gust or semi goes by you or you have to swerve to get to miss something on the road and that you can feel that trailer thinking about doing something in the back, the dually... Like it just keeps going and says, nope, get back in line. And the trailer gets back in line. The single rear wheel, like sometimes it'll kind of move with the trailer a bit. It's definitely a more stable, pleasant towing experience with the dually. Like no question. These things are just wild. Only in America, man. <laughs> Plus what I got, Daddy, a brisket taco. Brisket taco? You find something yet, buddy? He wants just bacon on a biscuit. They get me with the smell every time. What is that? Yeah. That's Daddy's pecans. They're yummy. Look at all this sugar, buddy. Wow. We got fast, high quality, and affordable, but it's really hard to get all three. So this is, I'm gonna say fast and pretty good quality, but uh, how much was that? Almost 30 bucks for breakfast. <laughs> so this next gadget is something we didn't have on our first several RVs. That is our backup camera. You know, obviously as the name implies, it's good for backing up. Two big perks that are just as good, if not better than that, when you're driving. First is I can keep an eye on our e-bikes in the back and make sure they're still there and they're not like scraping on the ground or bouncing more than they should, that kind of thing. And probably the thing I love the most about it is if I'm changing lanes or passing someone, I can tell when to get over. I mean, yeah, I use my mirrors, I use common sense, 
but it's still nice to see that to be able to double check where somebody's at make sure somebody's not swerving over real quick or anything like that and so we've got a screen here in the truck that shows our backup camera so one topic that's a little bit of a debate when it comes to a truck is do i buy my truck first or the rv first i am the chicken or the egg a lot of times it's like you think you know what you want when you are going to get an rv but then you might tour something else and then you really love it and then you can't because the truck you just bought can't do it. we have seen that happen multiple times. We're doing two mountain passes today. We go from Georgia to Middle Tennessee. One of them I think is called Signal, one's called Lookout. Pretty legit, like five to eight percent grades. So when you buy a truck, you get to pick the gear ratio. And that has a lot to do with how you get up and down the mountains, how you accelerate. So because I wanted to have a better everyday driver, I did a lower gear ratio of like 373 with Ram, which is good for everyday driving. You get better mileage and it's plenty of torque. But once you start towing, <laughs> it's like, Oh, I got a load behind me. It, it has a hard time sometimes on the on-ramps, barely faster than the semis maybe, so it's like that awkward speed going up stuff sometimes. I think in hindsight, I would have done the 410 ratio, which would have gotten slightly worse gas mileage, but would have given me the torque I'd rather have. We still get up the mountains. And as far as mountain this driving, one other big thing, like I love, love, love the exhaust brake on this. Like no issue stopping. I mean, I have hydraulic brakes on the trailer too, exhaust on this. Like if you're back and forth on a truck and you know that's one thing you're gonna get usually with the diesel trucks it's the exhaust brake it helps so much especially if you have a heavy rv behind you. <laughs> so we made it back to our home base in tennessee <laughs> we just left 80 degrees in sunny weather in florida to be here yeah it's a little bit different thank you truck though we did get back again we were not the first ones up the mountain but we made it up the mountain oh my goodness it's so cold <laughs> why 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 this is my why my back in tennessee face <laughs> we love tennessee but <laughs> if you could buy any truck to replace this one. <laughs> what would it have that this one doesn't have or what would you do differently? Probably pick like a Jeep Gladiator. No, that's not a truck. Any truck I want. What, what are some features? It has to be pretty. This is my this is my life. Well, I will share one. I think I think Marissa would like to have more um legroom in the back. Massagers. Uh, apparently massagers. <laughs> have you not ridden in one of the newer trucks that has like massage in the seat? I haven't glorious massagers <laughs> okay she wants something pretty that massages you yeah don't so. we all <laughs> <laughs> as far as power and dually i'm not super picky on the brand even you know i don't know if it's heresy or not because they're all like super beefy trucks that do almost anything you want nowadays if you get something like in the last couple of years the big thing i'm going back and forth about is do i get a long bed or do we stay with a short oh, bed oh i and that's know that's kind of a debate for us i personally love driving the short bed better because it's easier for me to drive i think i would lean toward long bed really if a mega cab dually just fell in my lap for the right price and was the right features, I'm not saying I wouldn't do it. And I'm not saying yeah. I regret what we bought. It's been good for me. I haven't driven a lot of long beds around town, but I would have to imagine it's easier to drive around town with the turn radius and backing it. I just feel like so many times nice. you're saying, I'm really glad I have a short bed right about <laughs> That's now. That's true, I do. <laughs> so if you enjoyed seeing all the different gear and gadgets we use with our truck, uh, we have also put together a list of our top 20 items that we recommend when it comes to full-time RV living. These are things we go out and we buy almost first thing. Anytime we change an RV or we're going somewhere. So uh, Nathan put some of his favorites and I put some of my favorites. So it's a really great list with easy to use links for you to check out for your journey. So if you want to check that out, you can download it for free at lessjunkmorejourney.com slash top 20 items. In case you're wondering why we're in the cold of Tennessee, that's coming up in the next couple of videos. I'll give you a hint. <laughs> We might be going somewhere soon. Can you guess? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's the journey for this week. Until next week, we'll catch you guys later.